Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we're looking at the Arcase Commandment mod list, created by Fornication, released for Skyrim Special Edition. The version I've been playing on is version 1.9, released on the 13th of February 2022. You can check on the list discord linked below for any changes and updates. Firstly, what is Arcase Commandment? The description reads, Arcase Commandment is a rec room and three tweaks based mod list that aims to provide a fair, challenging Skyrim experience. You'll be pressured to manage your resources efficiently, plan your travels carefully, and take on all encounters cautiously. It's also worth noting that you're only given one life, and while you can switch off this feature, the list was made with it in mind. Arcase Commandment is available to download from the Wabberjack mod list installer. While I won't cover the specifics of the installation in this video, the installation was quick and easy, with clear instructions provided. For help with the download, you can follow along with my Wabberjack explanation guide video on my channel and linked below. With around 650 mods, you'll need about 100GB of storage to download. And once in game, all of the mod menus are already configured, so you just click play and get to it. Now for what the mod list adds. For this showcase, I'll be showing clips taken throughout my current playthrough. I've spent plenty of time with this list, and so I have a good grasp on what it's like to play. While this list is heavily gameplay focused, it definitely hasn't skimped on the graphic side of things, offering a full and vibrant feel to the world of Skyrim. With cathedral weathers providing great looking skies, and mods like dynamic volumetric lighting and sun shadows, creating a natural look to the world. And the same goes for new textures, with noble Skyrim providing the base textures of the world, which all fit perfectly into Skyrim's theme. The mod Happy Little Trees provide new detailed tree models that fit seamlessly into the world, and a number of grass and floral mods have been combined to really add to the lush feeling of the landscape. Then there's the EMB, which is switched off by default, but can be enabled by moving a couple of files around. It really focuses on the colourful fantasy feeling, and definitely makes the list stand apart from others. It also makes interiors realistically dark, so you'll need to turn on your lantern in caves. With or without the EMB, Arcade's Commandment still performs great, where I found I was averaging between 1600 FPS, even while recording. And as a final note, I encountered minimal bugs while playing, which is extremely important when you're playing with only one life. Arcade's Commandment is designed to challenge you more so than the vast majority of lists, but that doesn't mean things are unfair. There's a focus on roleplay and survival, and while it can be incredibly difficult, you can still find ways to get the upper hand. The biggest change comes from the Requiem mod, which completely overhauls the game, and it's combined with the Three Tweaks mod, which adjusts many of the gameplay features in Requiem to be more balanced. These mods are easily big enough to have a video all on their own, but to summarise some of the features, a huge amount of perks have been tweaked and added to offer more playstyle variety and just make them more interesting in general. And focusing your perk points on the skill tree is more important, as skill level doesn't provide as much as a buff as vanilla. And to level up, you'll need to find items called Insight, or Greater Insight Potions, which are usually found as loot or quest rewards. By default, Stamina and Magicka regeneration rates are halved, and Health no longer regenerates at all. However, a number of regeneration options are available through new spells, perks, enchantments, and so on. Casting spells while exhausted or wearing heavy armour now comes with a big penalty. Fast travel is disabled, meaning horses and cart rides are all the more valuable. Loot is no longer dependent on your level, although high quality items are hard to find. Merchant stock varies, depending on their region and importance, and may charge higher prices, depending on your skill levels related to those items. And finally, Crafting and enchanting requires more perks to actually make anything useful, and handbooks need to be read on how to craft certain materials. But to counter the new difficulty, someone who becomes an expert crafter will be able to make some incredibly powerful gear. I say finally, but I've barely scratched the surface of everything Requiem and Three Tweaks adds, 
and I'll be talking about even more changes in the other sections of this video. Continuing with other gameplay features, there's also the permadeath, which is exactly how it sounds. You have one life, and if you die, you cannot continue your character. Like I said at the start, this can be switched off, and it's what I did so I can actually record this video without dying over and over, but the list is designed around this idea. And while it can sound incredibly off-putting to some, there's a huge sense of reward when beating a game without dying a single time. And to ramp up the pressure even more so, the mod End Times has been added, which gives you 365 days in-game to kill the final boss, otherwise, you know, the world will end. Which honestly, I saw as a turn-off at first, because I usually don't like timers in games, but after playing a bunch, I've come to realise just how long a year in Skyrim really is. So I'm finding I'm not really stressed about the inevitable doom, and it makes the main threat feel all the more real. Also, as a final note, the mod Skyrim Souls is included, which makes it so entering your inventory won't pause the game, so you really need to prepare before exploring. Perhaps more so than any other list I've covered, I really suggest you take a look at the gameplay section of the README, as it covers a bunch of gameplay changes you really need to be ready for, and will greatly improve your chances of survival. The changes from Requiem and Three Tweaks carries over to the combat, which can be an incredibly difficult experience if you're not prepared. Again, I recommend looking at the mod pages if you want to see all the changes, but to summarise some of the most important, the world is now de-leveled, which means all the creatures and NPCs have their own level that isn't affected by your own. So if you go to a dangerous looking area, you'll likely find a creature that can just kill you instantly, but on the flip side, if you enter a shoddy looking bandit camp while prepared, you'll likely wipe them out with relative ease. When in a fight, taking damage and attacking will have a much greater impact on your stamina, and wearing heavy armour increases your chances of survival a lot more than light armour, but with a big cost to your movement. And overall, enemies are just more difficult in general. They'll be more aggressive with their attacks, and have their own unique traits, abilities, and much more. And with the improved AI, sneaking is a lot more difficult, but as a trade-off, sneak attacks are incredibly deadly. I could go on for ages, so to summarise, you really need to be wary of every enemy you face, and understand that preparation, movement, positioning, and attacking at just the right time are all key to making it out of a fight alive. And there's some other mods to go along with it, such as item durability, which lessens your weapon and armour stats as they're used so you'll need to visit a smith to keep them maintained. Plus the mod Enemy Friendly Fire makes it so NPCs can deal damage to their comrades, if they get in the way. And finally, saving isn't allowed while in combat. So as you can tell, combat is incredibly unforgiving. Although, while I have listed a bunch of challenges you'll face, it's worth remembering that with all the new perks and playstyles, you can work at becoming just as formidable as the enemy. With the idea of having a single life, and the fact there's only one in-game year to beat the main villain, there's no huge quest mods added. This way, the balance is kept, and you aren't too distracted from the world ending. Although, there are a few mods like missives, which adds a number of smaller quests that can be found pinned on boards. And there's also Headhunter, which expands the bounty quests, so you have to bring proof of dead bandits back to the city, much like trophies in The Witcher 3. There's also been some subtle changes to Skyrim's world space. For example, Riften now has more connecting docks, inns include more areas to cook, and more bandit camps are placed in the emptier parts of the world. Tons of audio mods have been added, providing a better awareness of the world around you, which is vital for challenging lists. The main audio changes comes from audio overhaul and immersive sounds, which affect almost every sound in the game to make Skyrim feel all the more natural. And more specific mods affect the creatures of the world, giving them more distinct sounds to help you hear them coming. Have a listen to the audio for yourself.
while there's not a plethora of new items like in some lists, Arcade's Commandment does add a decent amount and changes all of the existing ones to feel more unique, all of which fitting into the world of Skyrim and balanced to work with the list. Also, you'll now find weapons with different conditions. For example, you may come across a rusty silver sword, meaning you'll need to tamper with it to make it better. And the same goes for armours, with many of Skyrim's existing armours looking and feeling different from vanilla, especially since armour weight has a big impact on your movement and stamina. Then there's the new spells, with Rec Room adding a ton of fun and balanced spells to find, as well as tweaking almost every existing spell to be more balanced and provide more gameplay variety. For some other notable changes, you can't access the main map, as now you need to purchase an actual map to find where you're going. Scrolls are now far more useful, offering unique effects and being much easier to cast during combat. With the UI mod Dear Diary, it provides an old RPG look to the HUD, and a number of other mods help provide more details on your character and the enemies around you. And finally, mountain climbing is far more dangerous, so it's best to stick to a path rather than awkwardly shuffling up a mountain, like in vanilla. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding and accept that any consequences are yours to deal with. Now, because this list is so focused on a specific goal, it's difficult to add any mods without breaking the experience, so adding new weapons, armours and such, we'll all need to have the balance of Requiem in mind. Also, I know Quick Loot is a popular mod to add, and from what I've seen, it will work, but apparently it can mess up the changes made to loot distribution. When it comes to the UI, the Arcade's Commandment Discord has a pin about making UI changes, and the list also comes with ultrawide patches that are easily enabled, As you can tell, Arcade's Commandment definitely focuses on a specific niche, and because of that, it offers a very polished experience that caters to a certain player base. Permadeath playstyles have a huge community within gaming, but quite often, Skyrim is seen as too buggy and unbalanced to provide a satisfying experience, but with this list, it offers everything a permadeath player could want. And even if it's not your kind of thing, Arcade's Commandment offers a truly unique and unforgiving Skyrim experience, one which is great for anyone who enjoys hardcore modes and finds himself wanting to feel like an actual person living in the dangerous world of Skyrim. If you're somewhat new to the game or never played a heavily modded Skyrim, then this list won't be for you, but if you're seeking a challenge and enjoy the thrill of going into every fight knowing it could be your last, then I'm sure you'll love this list. While it doesn't usually fit my kind of playstyle, I know I'll be going back to this list, as I love seeing just how far I can make it alive. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow, and you can give that subscribe button a good old smack if you want to see more videos like this. I also have a Twitch where one day I plan on streaming a bunch, it'll happen, and a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Emperor Wolf, Jack Ma, Michael Eric and Christian Howell. I say this every time and I'll never stop saying it, I am just so appreciative of everything you've given me, and it really helps me produce this content at the rate I am. Thank you so so much everyone, and farewell.